Okay, so we are off and running with Hess's Law. Now this tutorial is an introduction as to what Hess's Law is and the situations that come about where you are going to need to use it. Of course, Hess is all about enthalpy changes. Now we've looked at enthalpy changes that we can measure in the lab using minus MCAT, but uh, Hess's Law is actually all about enthalpy changes that we can't measure in the lab, things that we can't measure directly. So Hess's law is used when reactions cannot be measured directly in the lab. I.e. when they're too fast, too slow, or just impossible to measure. Now there are a number of different definitions of Hess's law that are banding about. Each textbook you read will have a different explanation of Hess's law, but this is by far the most simple and easy to remember of all the definitions of Hess's law. The enthalpy change for a reaction is independent of the route taken. Now that might seem like a bit of a mystery, okay? Like it doesn't really make much sense that, but I'll just show you exactly what I mean and hopefully it will make perfect sense. So as I said, we're looking at reactions that we can't measure the enthalpy change of directly in the lab. So generally speaking, if we have our reactants over one side, and of course they go to form our products. Now let's call this reaction, the thing that we're trying to find the enthalpy change for, delta HR, just a generic kind of uh, enthalpy change for that reaction. Now what we can't do is measure that directly. So we've got no way of measuring it. As I say, it might be too fast, way too slow. The enthalpy change is that small that we can't measure it maybe. There's a whole host of different reasons why we can't measure that, let's say reaction directly. So we need to find an alternative route because what we say with Hess's law is the enthalpy change for a reaction is independent of the route taken. Let's say there was another way of getting from these things to these things via something else, via, let's say, our intermediates. Okay, so we're going to call these intermediates because, you know, it doesn't really matter what they are, they're just providing another way around for this reaction. That's a bit of a rubbish box there, but that doesn't matter. So we've got these intermediates. This provides an alternative route. So if we can turn our reactants into these intermediates and then react these intermediates to form our products, that gives us an alternative way around to get from here to here. Now let's say these, this reaction here and this reaction here, we can measure in the lab. We can actually obtain that data, okay? So if we can find this delta H and this delta H, I'm gonna call them one and two just for argument's sake now, um, then we can actually find this by using these values, okay? So let's say, for example, that I know this reaction here has a delta H of minus 200 kilojoules per mole, okay? And this reaction here has a delta H of 500 kilojoules per mole. What we can do is we can use these values, as I say, to find this. And how do we do that? Well, our delta HR, the one we want to find, is basically the sum of the enthalpies in the alternative route. So in this example here, our delta HR would equal minus 200 plus, I'm gonna put that in brackets, minus 500. And that gives us a total of minus 700 kilojoules per mole. Now, because Hess's law states that the enthalpy change for a reaction is independent of the route taken, what that means is we can take this route or this alternative route and the delta H that is going to be exactly the same. So what we can say here is that added by adding these up, it will equal this value here. So this mystery value, we can just add these alternative delta H's up and we'll find a value for our delta HR. And in this case, minus 700 kilojoules per mole, okay? Now, this alternative route scenario, this is kind of idyllic, if you like, okay? You're never gonna get something like this in an exam. I'm just gonna draw out two more likely scenarios for you and explain how we can go about helping you with these other scenarios.
Okay, so scenario one, we've got our reactants and we've got our products. And this time, you know, we have got an alternative route. We've got our intermediates, but we haven't got the delta H to go from here to our intermediates. We've got the delta H's from our intermediates to our reactants and to our products. Now, those of you who are very observant will notice that these arrows don't flow the way we want them to. Let's say we've got, I say an imaginary, this is a blatantly a green line, but um, basically we're gonna have this imaginary route. We need to get from here to here via our intermediates. Now, what you'll notice is that this arrow, well, that's going the way we wanna go. We wanna get from our reactants around this way to our products. This arrow is fine, that's going the right way. But this arrow here is actually going the wrong way, okay? So what we need to do is we need to invert this arrow. Now, how do we go about that? Well, let's say that this reverse arrow here, the one that's going the wrong way, that delta H is plus 200 kilojoules per mole. Well, we can't use that because it's going the wrong way. It's like, basically, I want that bus, but it's actually going the opposite way than what I need it to, okay? But what we can do with Hess's law is say that if this reaction is plus 200 kilojoules per mole, if it's endothermic this way, if we can flip that round to make it go the correct way, the value for that delta H will be equal and opposite. So we'll actually be minus 200 kilojoules per mole. So if you're in a situation like this, more likely when you're given delta H Fs, which is in another video, then you need to flip that arrow around and you do that by inverting the number, okay? And don't forget, the enthalpy change is equal and opposite. Now, our second scenario. Now, what you can see here is that again, we've got an issue with our arrows. At this time, it's this one that's going the wrong way. Again, our imaginary stroke green line here, we're gonna get from left to right, but actually it's this arrow here that's going the wrong way. This one's okay. And again, this one, let's say if this is plus 500, if we know this value from products to intermediates, to actually apply Hess's law, what we need to do is flip that arrow around. And of course, that's gonna be equal and opposite at minus 500, okay? So this still applies. The sum of the enthalpies in the alternative route will equal our delta HR at the top here, but we do need to have some playing around with these numbers. Now, what I want you to remember from this tutorial is not only these two things here in red, but one more. Delta H values are equal and opposite for the reverse reaction. So Hess's law, the enthalpy change for a reaction is independent of the route taken and we use it when we can't measure delta H values directly in the lab for whatever reason, okay? Essentially, the delta H R for a reaction that we can't measure, if we know some other delta H values, then the sum of those enthalpies will basically equal our delta H R value at the top, for example, here. Again, you are more likely to give in these scenarios where the arrows are going up, and that will be for delta H F values. Again, check out the next tutorial. Over here, where our arrows are both going down, okay, and we need to flip a different one over, this is where you're gonna come across it with delta H Cs, delta H combustions, and again, that's another tutorial. So hopefully you know what Hess's law is and how we can apply it to these things and these energy cycles. And uh, you know, if you check out the next couple of videos, then I'll uh, give you some examples on exactly how to do this, okay?